Oh, that was a flash. A white flash. That oh, wow. That was Matea. Matea. Yeah. But that was definitely a flash. It is amazing how little we know about the deep sea. It's not very well investigated because of the challenges by going into the deep. But we're getting closer now, especially with the RVs and the fantastic new submarines. My name is Henrik Lennon. My name is Anders Garm. On this mission, we are going to work on bioluminescence. The understanding of the deep sea is extremely important because it's a huge environment. The deep sea ocean floor covers maybe half the Earth's surface. If we really want to understand the diversity of biology, the diversity of life, uh, our own evolution for that matter, we definitely also need very much to consider what happens in the deep sea. There's a lot of stuff that is completely unknown. One of them, of course, is why are most of these animals we find down there, why are they bioluminescent? Bioluminescence is light produced by living organisms. Classic example is the fireflies. It's actually one of the most common traits of animals in the sea. Three quarters of all animals from the surface to the deep sea are bioluminescent. And when you have a thing that is so common and has evolved several times, then it must be super important. And that's why it's important also for us to find out why. In 99.999% of all the cases, we don't really know why they do it. We are going to investigate a certain organism they're called Brachyndid starfish. It is a starfish that is relatively large. The biggest one goes up to 80 centimeters in diameter, so almost a meter. The common starfish, you know, will typically have five arms. The ones we'll be looking at will have between 10 and 12 arms. On certain areas of Sonofjorn, they are one of the dominant invertebrate species on the seafloor. It's a fantastic situation where you have this relatively rare organisms in enormous amounts. We know very, very little about them because they're almost only found in the deep sea. But all the five species of presingids we have tested, they are all bioluminescent. We don't know why they are bioluminescent. We just know that they're able to send out this light. Just like a lot of other, especially deep sea animals, we have only a, just a faint understanding on, on how these animals function. Yeah, it is good. It was nice. Starfish are actually pretty complex animals, even though they do not seem to be. We discovered a few years back that some of them have really good eyes. Now, eyes in starfish is, is uh, somewhat of a surprise for many people, but they have eyes pretty similar to the eyes you know from insects. Our idea is that they use these eyes for communication. So down there on the seafloor, they might be flashing at each other and then seeing it so they can communicate things like I'm a male, I want a mate, are you a female? So they can sort of find each other in that way. So that's the hypothesis, one of them we're gonna test uh, on this cruise. We're testing two other, one is as a prey lure. They are extremely slow animals. They are not able to move very fast after prey. The way you see them in the sea is that they, they lift their arms above the seafloor. They sit like a basket, so the arms sort of fold up and they feed as sit and wait predators. Then they are sending out this light. A lot of animals living in the dark are attracted to light. So you know it from that night, if you have your light on on your porch and you will have all kinds of insects coming in, swarming around your light. A lot of animals in the sea does the same. So another hypothesis is that when they do these small flashes, copper parts will come in and be curious and attracted to this. And then they are trapped by the arms. The last hypothesis we're also testing is what we call the burglar alarm. And it's sort of going by the theory that the enemy of your enemy is your friend. When a fish is coming, eating, or trying to bite something of the organisms, they are sending out strong light. And this strong light 
is causing other larger predators to come and the larger predators are eating the smaller predator and thereby sort of rescue the starfish. So that might actually be what is happening with our starfish. Oh, it's a sea star. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, let's yeah, pick yeah, it up. Yes. Wow. Look how beautiful it is. I mean, it's really, wow. What we want to do is to look at the behavior down there. It has never been recorded in the natural environment. We'll be able to send down really sensitive cameras and film the bioluminescence on the bottom at a depth of 1,200 meters. We'll collect the animals and then we'll do further experiments in the tank in the lab. Oh, that was a flash, a white flash. Oh, wow. That was uh, yeah. definitely a flash. It's a fantastic opportunity to simply uh, use a robot arm to, to collect them. They are fragile, so we have to be very careful. Bioluminescence, it's, it's a strange phenomenon that sort of is not part of our own daily lives. But what is a part of our daily lives is light. We are always really fascinated by light. We know that from art, we know that from culture, we know that from just being human beings. What you have to sort of realize when you're talking about bioluminescence, it's the light as such is of course interesting, but what you do when you produce light is that you want some eye to see it. It's geared for an eye. So the way eye works today has been formed by the kind of bioluminescence that has been around in the sea for a large part. And eyes might have started there for many animals to detect the bioluminescence. So we are interconnected and we have to understand the connection. Yeah, so, so, so what, what actually you see here in mind is, it's, it is actually feeding. It's trying to feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that could definitely be, uh, be happening. Oh, there was another flash there. So that's going to be in this region here. Every single flash is going to be uh, analyzed in detail. Intensity and uh, color and, and duration. Biodiversity is important. We know that simply the number of habitats and the organisms that have found these habitats stabilize the ecosystem. If we take away some of the species and even some of the ones that does not look like very important, a stable system can suddenly collapse. By understanding the biodiversity, we will understand how evolution has created all the different kinds of life we know, including ourselves. Life is coming from the sea. That's where it all originated. I think it's super important to find out for us understanding life on Earth, what is going on in this sea that we are all coming from. <laughs>